We are on the verge of witnessing the rise of a new football legend, one destined to age his name alongside Manchester United's greatest icons. He may be low rated for now, but make no mistake, he has all the qualities needed to win the hearts of Red Devils fans and lead Manchester United back to the ultimate glory. Thomas Laval is a true uncut gem and he will reach greatness one day. But firstly we need to identify Laval's role in this Manchester United team. Rasmus Hoylund is a guaranteed starter up top, with Martial being his backup for this season. Sadly Laval is not even going to make the bench for the most of the games. So he decided to have a talk with the manager about his role in the club for the upcoming season. Clearly, you show all the signs the football star needs, but for now, we do have a lot of competition in the team, and I can't promise you will get the minutes you desire this season. And after consulting with his agent, Laval asked the manager to loan list him for a season so he could have appropriate playtime and gain experience needed to perform on the highest level. And that's exactly what happened. Laval's got a lot of interest right after being loan listed. But the clubs that have come for him was mainly from the EFL League 1. He is surely good enough to play in the second tier league, like the Championship or the Serie B. So we decided to wait a little bit more and it paid off eventually. Thomas Laval is living Manchester United's camp for Portsmouth, the team that has recently been promoted to the Championship and has ambitious plans of staying and pushing even for the playoff spot. But is that too bold for a team which clearly lacks the quality the championship requires? And the main question, is Thomas Laval good enough to compete in this league? I guess we will find that out soon. Portsmouth board completed three transfers besides loaning in Thomas Laval, and they were serious about the new season. Portsmouth signed two players for defense by strengthening the right back position and the center back position. And finally, Eden Horvath was signed as the main man between the sticks. But the reality is that the team was struggling hard. They lost their first game against Burnley considering two goals in the first half without creating a proper chance to score. And even worse, Portsmouth lost the second game to their bitter rival Southampton, again being bang average in attack and simply amateur in defense. And on top of that, Thomas Laval did not get a single minute in these games and it was obvious Portsmouth was desperate for further improvements. So the board decided to strengthen the squad with new signings. Luca Connell signed to play in the center of the pitch and two signings for the left flank, Josh Murphy and Lee Uchenen. And the very next game Laval finally made his debut for Portsmouth, but to be fair, he was struggling on the pitch. He lost the ball a couple of times, caught out of position even more often and Portsmouth ended up losing another game with the same score. And it was a disappointing performance from Laval. Did he make a mistake by joining Portsmouth? After 6 games Portsmouth was the dead last in the league with 0 points. Thomas Laval had 3 games with 0 goal involvements. This was a disaster of a start. Can Portsmouth even dream of surviving the championship? And is Laval even a right player to help them? Or he is going to return to Manchester with having zero impact this season? At this point it was clear something had to be changed right away. And the manager decided to switch the tactical vision of the team to counter-attack. The very next game against Bristol, Portsmouth was looking a little bit more solid at the back. But they conceded first again in the 79th minute. But then, in the 90th minute, Laval performed an amazing incisive pass to Lane, who managed to find the net and just like that, the first point in the league was secured. After that game, manager decided to use the best qualities of Laval and changed his position from striker to center forward. Now Laval is playing behind the main striker Bishop and that small change was crucial. Although the next game was probably the most painful one as Preston scored the winner on the last second of the game, clearly Portsmouth was gaining confidence and was ready for their first win. After 10 games, sitting on the last position and having only 3 draws all the season, Portsmouth was preparing for the game against Stock City. And they played the match brilliantly, especially Laval who scored his first goal in professional football after the steal. And although Stoke managed to equalize soon enough, another beautiful play from Laval found Connell completely free and he smashed it home, securing the first win for Portsmouth. Again, Portsmouth seemed to start the game strong almost every time scoring the first, but lack of attention after scoring a goal has become a pattern, and if they managed to score again, they would most probably win. 
This good form continued till January. Laval Bishop partnership was deadly upfront and it paid off massively. After 26 games, Portsmouth drastically improved their results and now we're on the 16th position with 33 points. But surely, Horseman had a long way to go and losses happened along the road. Again, the lack of experience of playing in this level was obvious. Thomas Laval was extremely exhausted, only 17 years old and he played almost every single game from the beginning till the end. And as a result, he was benched for the game against Preston in the FA Cup round of 32. Preston was looking sharp at this game and got the opener with a majestic free kick from Potts. And after Preston scored the second as well in the beginning of the second half, the manager decided to bring Laval in for 30 minutes and unfortunately the worst happened. Thomas pulled his hamstring and was forced to leave the pitch. It is going to take 7 weeks for him to fit in again. And the hardest part of the season for Portsmouth began. They struggled big time, especially when Kobe Bishop got injured as well. After 37 games, Portsmouth were only 17th with 45 points and it's safe to say that the season was ended for them. But the one last game against the rival Southampton, Horseman is willing to take their revenge. But to be honest, Southampton are looking way better on the pitch and opened the score already in the 6th minute of the game. Although Thomas Laval tried his best by having the shots from different distances, he had most probably his match of the season, it was not enough. And the second time in a single year, Horseman lost in the derby. The heartbreaking ending of the season for Portsmouth fans. In the end of the season, Portsmouth made their way up to the 13th place. And as a bit of relief, Southampton battled the playoff final against Middlesbrough. Thomas Laval had a massive first season in his career with 14 goal contributions, one of the best performances in this Portsmouth team. He does have another season on loan at Fratton Park, it's better be good. A lot of departures happened right in the beginning of the next season. Besides that, the board was backing up the manager with some massive signings, starting with Lone and then Charlie Patino from Arsenal, but most importantly, three other high profile talents were signed. In Issa Diop from Fulham, Linton Miner from Köln, and probably the main signing for Portsmouth, Kelechi Ihianacho from Leicester joined the team as well. To spend almost 25 million on transfers in the championship was a clear statement. Portsmouth is the promotion candidate. And they started the season greatly. New number 10 of the team Laval scored the first goal of the season and created a new deadly partnership with Ihianacho. And it worth to be mentioned, Portsmouth goalkeeper Ethan Horvath elevated his game to the new heights and was a unit between the sticks. After 10 games in the league, Portsmouth were 5th and Laval played almost all the games and was one of the leaders on the pitch. They continued this form further in the season and Laval started to take more and more responsibility. Although Portsmouth were still adapting to the league and were losing the points to the teams from the middle of the table, the team led by Ihianacho and Laval was fighting in every game for the win. Thomas Laval began to demonstrate his outrageous skills on the ball and opponents clearly did not enjoy it. Anyways, the positive results were coming pretty regularly. In January, Portsmouth is looking solid on the 4th position with 44 points. They even have a chance for the direct promotion, but let's be real, do they actually have the quality right now? In the second part of the season, Portsmouth lost some precious points against the teams from the bottom of the table, as well as yet another derby against Southampton, ending up the regular season on the 4th position, just behind their rivals. It is the time for the promotion playoff semi-finals against West Bromwich Albion. This is a massive opportunity for Portsmouth to return to the Premier League after 14 years and they are willing to take it. They strike first after the brilliant team play. In the beginning of the second half, John Swift gets direct red card for the disgraceful tackle on Laval. And it seems that Portsmouth will not have a difficulty to win this game in their favour. But against all the odds, West Brom has found the equalizer and that's it. 1-1 after the first game. Everything will be decided in the second match. Kelechi Hianacho is still missing because of the injury. 
but despite that fact, Portsmouth were attacking hard. They had a couple of bullet chances, but eventually the through ball from Charlie Patino found Bishop one-on-one -on -one against the keeper, and he got the opener. And that was enough. Portsmouth was in the promotion finals, facing their bitter rivals Southampton, who are desperate to win this battle, especially after the devastating loss in the final year ago. You did see everything correctly. Luka Modric is their captain and the leader, and it will be fair to say, this game was all Southampton. They had massive chances in the first half, and in the beginning of the second half as well. But Ethan Orwood was having the game of the lifetime, and apart from that, even Modric was missing sitters. But everything changed in the 73rd minute. When Thomas Laval produced another impressive pass, finding Lang on the right flank, and he opened the score. And this was not the end. Five minutes later, an individual brilliance of Laval struck again. This time, Linton Miner saw his name written on the scoreboard. An outstanding five minutes of excellence from the young talent, and Portsmouth started celebrating the promotion to the Premier League. Those were 14th and 15th assists from Laval alongside 14 goals this season. Ridiculous numbers from the 19 years old. He was one point short from the top assister of the league and also unlocked a new playstyle. Alongside his signature close dribbling and Trevella shots, he is now able to perform incisive passes regularly with high accuracy. And after two years of highly successful loan spell at Portsmouth, Laval is returning to Manchester. But the manager has a surprise for him, and not a pleasant one. We are going to overhaul this team completely. After the previous season results, we are going to sell players including star names, players that represented Manchester United during a very long time. We are going to change the philosophy and a go-to formation for the team. With this in mind, I think we can use you in the flanks. But to be completely honest with you, you got a serious competition up front, so if you want to leave the club, I will understand. That was harsh from the manager, but Laval is willing to stay to fulfill his boyhood dream to play for Manchester United at the Theatre of Dreams. So he decided to stay and fight for the spot in the team, although it's going to be extremely hard as the front three of Rashford, Garnacho and Hoyland are going to be the main force of the team and also Laval had not the best preseason, playing only 15 minutes and not impressing at all. Manchester United spent a huge amount of money during the summer transfer window and completed really solid transfers, bringing in Bubakar Kamara from Aston Villa to play as a holding midfielder. Turkish left slash right back Ferdi Kadirlu and a most important transfer, they managed to bring in Matthias De Ligt from Bayern Munich to play alongside Lisandro Martinez. These reinforcements were absolutely needed and Manchester United is looking solid as ever. They demonstrated an excellent performance in Liverpool in the opening day of the season. Rasmus Hoyland made himself a brace to start the season with a very important win. Although they were losing points quite often playing as a visitors, at the Old Trafford they were looking much more solid. Another brilliant performance from Hoyland, a goal and an assist against Burnley. But on the contrary, Thomas Laval was still waiting for his chance to play an official game for Manchester United and the Europa League was a great opportunity for him. The first game against Fenerbahce was a fun one. Teams did not hesitate to attack and score. Again, Manchester United was relying heavily on Hoyland and he continued to deliver and just after his goal, it finally happened. Thomas Laval is coming in instead of Alejandro Garnacho, but to be fair, it was not a dream debut for him. Although he was playing with a great desire, fighting for every ball, demonstrating his skills and abilities on the ball, in the end, it was not a debut he could have dreamed Death. And Laval waited for his second chance quite a bit and he got it in the game against Wycombe at the Old Trafford once again. He came in in the second half and was very close to score a signature long shot but he hit the crossbar. That's too bad. What a goal it could have been. Manchester United continued their winning streak in the Europa League. This time, St. Pats was struggling against the Red Devils and Thomas Laval got yet another chance in the second half. But he did not have a single proper opportunity and once again was leaving the pitch with zero impact on the game. This bad form was an indicator for Ten Hag. Maybe Thomas needed more time to adapt to the highest level and he missed a game against his former club Portsmouth in the Carabao Cup where Manchester United managed to win and progress to the next round.
But in the league, United started to lose the points, especially against the mid-table teams like Everton, who managed to grab a point against the Red Devils at the Goodison Park. Manchester was only 7th after 11 games and Laval had a stinker of a season so far with 3 appearances and 0 goal involvements. The next time Thomas Laval played for Manchester United was in the last game of the Europa League group stages against St. Pats. Surely this was his game, he was going to shine. And indeed he got his first assist for United with the same kind of an incisive pass that he used to perform in Portsmouth. He found Muniz who did his job there perfectly. Perfectly. In January, Manchester United had a very tough sequence of the games, losing to Arsenal in the Carabao Cup and to Liverpool in the Premier League. They were only fifth in the table, with somewhat decent chances to fight for the Champions League spot. But for Thomas Laval, the most important game was against Stock City in the FA Cup round of 32, as he started the game in United kit for the first time in his career. Although he could have been nervous, but instead he pulled this one out from 30 yards a magnificent Trivella, quite a way to score your first goal for your dream club. He also provided a perfect ball to Garcia who scored the second one. Laval left the pitch with the loudest ovations from the stands, surely fans are loving him. Despite this fantastic performance, he was not chosen for the next round game against Aston Villa, where the hosts eliminated Manchester United from the FA Cup. And after that, Laval started to get some minutes in the Europa League matches. Clearly, Ten Hag did not count on him very much. The first quarter-final game in the Europa League against Newcastle ended 2-2 and both teams were trying their best to win the second one. But clearly Newcastle were pushing for the win harder. They had good scoring opportunities this game but Andre Onana was unbelievable that night and it went on to the post-match penalty series. Both teams were good and scored all their penalties until the last shot when Andre Onana saved the kick from Joel Linton and Rasmus Hoyland sent Manchester United through to the semi-finals. Although Laval has scored his penalty, other than that he was very quiet that day. Next up in the semi-finals Manchester were facing Wolfsburg and the exact same scenario was written for this match as well. First game again 2-0 draw and the second game although Wolfsburg were slightly better on the pitch the score remained nil-nil after 120 minutes. Another penalty shootout and another flawless sequence of the shots. The tension was growing. Who is going to crack under that huge pressure and miss the penalty that can be the decisive one? And no, Thomas Laval puts his shot wide. What an awful attempt. And Pablo Torre grabs the winner for Vosburg with a Panenka shot. Such a heartbreaking moment for the young Englishman. He let the team down and apparently he is all on his own. After that miss, there was a hate agenda towards Thomas Laval in social media. The fans were not happy with his season either. 11 games, only a single goal and 3 assists, another mediocre, trophyless season for Manchester United and the fans were blaming Laval. So he made an eye-opening decision to leave the old Trafford. He immediately got an offer from Liverpool, but with all the love he had for the Manchester United, he rejected that offer. Soon enough, Gian Piero Gasperini approached Manchester United for Laval's transfer. And in a matter of days, it was done. Thomas Laval moved to Bergamo permanently. It is going to be hard for 20 years old player to adapt to the new reality, to the new league and new teammates. It will take some time. So let's see what will happen. Other than Laval, Atalanta made two other major signings, bringing in Torino star centre-back Alessandro Bongiorno, as well as Pepe Lu from Valencia for the pivot position. As Gasperini prefers gegenpressing as a tactical vision, Laval should work hard on his physical stats to make the first 11, but for now he is on the bench. And to be honest, the start of the season was tough for Atalanta. They got only a point in the starting two games with the draw against Sassuolo and the loss in front of the home fans from Lazio. Thomas Laval made his debut for Atalanta in the Champions League match against Wolfsburg, where both teams were not in their best shape, a goalless draw as a result. Another loss happened in the next fixture from Real Madrid and Atalanta was risking to not qualify for the playoff phase in the Champions League. And in the Serie A as well, things were not good either, cause Atalanta were losing points constantly and were out of Champions League spot after 10 games. 
Despite having regular playtime mostly from the bench, Thomas Laval was struggling to adopt to the new country and the new league, having only a single assist in 8 games. Slowly but surely, he started to get more and more minutes on the pitch, and Atalanta regained their confidence in the Champions League with the win against Slavia. In the next game against Monza, Laval was a starter finally, and he paid off to the manager already in the 14th minute by scoring his first goal for the team. And when things just seemed to normalize for the team and Laval himself, an unfortunate tackle from two opponents simultaneously sent Laval to the hospital with a broken ankle. Three months on recovery, this much time he is going to miss out. But surprisingly, without Laval, Atalanta continued their winning streak both in the Champions League and in the Serie A, only losing points to the big three regularly. Thomas Laval recovered from his injury before the first match in the Champions League round of 16 against Atletico Madrid, where Atalanta dominated most of the game and only the brilliant goalkeeping skills demonstrated by Jan Oblak kept Atletico in the game. And against all the odds, even conceding from Iran Kunda in the 16th minute, Atletico somehow managed to win this game and got the advantage before the second match at the Vanda Metropolitana, where the only goal from Griezmann ended Bergami's journey in the most prestigious European competition. That was a serious hit to the club, especially after they got eliminated from the Coppa Italia as well, losing to Milan. The only thing left to do was to perform in the Serie A on the highest level to secure the Champions League football for the next season. And after the series of wins, mostly due to a great form from Laval and especially from Ademola Lukman, Atalanta indeed made their way up to the fourth position and secured the Champions League football for the next season. Despite playing only 24 games, Thomas Laval had a massive second part of the season and contributed 15 times becoming one of the most important players for this team, but the next season promises to be even more challenging. As their leader and the best player of the team, Marco Carnesecchi left for Juventus. A huge blow for the team and to replace him Atalanta signed Michele De Gregorio from Nottingham Forest to be the number one of the team. Alongside this transfer, new faces have come to Bergamo. A very talented center back from Ecuador, William Pacho joined the team. To play on the right side, Atalanta got the transfer of Junior Tina Epimbe. And last but not least, Samuele Ricci will be sharing the playtime with Pepe Lu in the center of the pitch. With the slightly changed formation, Atalanta started the season in the Serie A with a match against Milan. Even though Milan opened the score in the 61st minute, 10 minutes later Atalanta managed to find the equalizer and grab a point at the San Siro. Thomas Laval was adapting quickly to his new position as the only center attacking midfielder, but the competition where he was at his best was the Champions League. He scored his first brace for Atalanta in the opening match of the group stages against Galatasaray to start their campaign very firmly. In the next game against Ajax, he got an assist in the 58th minute when Theon Cook Miners opened the score and in the 64th minute Laval scored himself after the lovely locked pass from Dina Ebimbe another man of the match worthy performance from Laval. Eventually Atalanta ended up the group stages on the second position, only two points behind Liverpool. But in the Serie A, their results were even more impressive. The second place after 26 games, just four points behind AC Milan, whom they are going to face the next game. And it was a stall game, with not a lot of opportunities to score. But in the 77th minute, Larsen scored the decider after Laval's cross from the corner kick, and Atalanta made a huge statement in the Scudetto race. Meanwhile, in the Champions League round of 16, they lost the first game against Borussia Dortmund 2-1, and they needed a miracle in the Signal Iduna Park to qualify for the quarterfinals. In the 43rd minute, Thomas Laval scored his fifth goal in the Champions League this season, after the brilliant individual play. It was a quiet game after that goal, and it went to an extra time. But everything changed in 118th minute when Borussia got the corner kick and managed to somehow squeeze the ball in to kick Atalanta out from the Champions League. Second year in a row, exit from the round of 16. 
But in the Serie A, Atalanta managed to keep the first position right until the last two games where they had to face Inter Milan, who has the same amount of points in the league, and Juventus, who are just behind Inter in the table. Nearly impossible task, but four points in two games against the best teams in Italy will secure the Serie A trophy for Atalanta. But first things first, they need not to lose to Inter at the Giuseppe Miazza who started the match aggressively and already scored in the 13th minute. They had even more chances after the goal, but Di Gregorio made some massive saves to keep Atalanta in the game. But to be fair, they were struggling to create a goal-scoring opportunity. Is this going to be the end of their dream? And there is still a little bit of time. Atalanta need just one goal. And here it is, the chance. The one last combination in the 88th minute, Leval van Lukman in the opponent's box and he chipped the goalie to equalize. This point leaves Atalanta in the first position just before the last game. It can be the decisive, the winning point, but for that they had to beat Juventus in the last game of the season. And it is not going to be easy. The old lady started the game with a golden opportunity but Fagioli hit the crossbar. Five minutes later, Thomas Laval created a pocket of space in the opponent's box with a fake shot and got the opener. What an amazing turn and a shot. Juventus tried hard to score the equalizer, but every chance they had, they missed. And that's it. It's going to be a madness in Bergamo. Atalanta have just become Italian champions for the first time in their entire history. Mainly due to incredible performances from the 22 years old Englishman throughout the whole season. What an amazing twist for him after being a failure in Manchester to become a hero in Bergamo. And as a result of such an influential season, he got an interest from all the European grants and particular Spanish teams are looking very closely for him. But for now, Laval is preparing for the Euros 2028 with the England national team. England started the tournament super confident with the win against Sweden 4-1. The very next game they beat current title holder Spain and took their revenge in the replay of the 2024 Euros final. Last game in the group of death they met Portugal. Portugal started this game aggressively and were close to score a couple of times but Pickford was good between the sticks. But eventually they opened the score with a beautiful long shot in the 23rd minute. Not long after that, England equalized the score with the help of Jude Bellingham. In the 17th minute, Cole Palmer scored a couple of minutes after coming in and England secured the first place in the group. As a result, they got a lucky draw in the quarterfinals and smashed the Poland national team 3-0. For the semi-final against Italy, Thomas Laval was on the bench for the first time in his career due to Foden's injury. That was his chance to make his long-awaited debut for England. But the game itself was very even in the first half. Both teams had their chances and the only goal of the game has been scored in the 50th minute. A gorgeous flick from Declan Rice and England made their way to the third consecutive Euros final, this time in their homeland. In the final, England met Netherlands at the Wembley and was by far the best team on the pitch, having a lot of goal-scoring opportunities, scoring the winning goal in the 39th minute with Jude Bellingham. They dominated Netherlands in the second half as well and finally, after so many dramas and failures, football came home. But for Thomas Laval, this tournament was kinda bittersweet as he did not play a single minute at the Euros. And it was clear he will not win the competition with top tier talents in the club level as well. So he decided to reject Real Madrid's offer. Instead, he soon met Thiago Mota and got charmed with his ideas. In the end, Laval made the decision to join Juventus. The old lady paid his release clause of 80 million euros and Laval is officially the player of the most decorated Italian club. Thiago Mota started restructuring process in this team and a lot of departures happened in the summer transfer window. Players like Yildiz, Peggioli, Ricky Puch has left the squad and besides Laval only one major transfer in Juventus managed to complete. The transfer of talented Frenchman left midfielder Desiree Douet from Stade René. Thiago Mota prefers attacking football, 4-4-1-1 formation, with the main attacking force Laval and Vlahovic playing down the middle. The opening day of 2028-2029 season, Juventus faced Sassuolo. 
In the 15th minute, Desiree Due missed a brilliant chance to score the first goal of the season. Soon after that, Sassuolo got the penalty for the fall against Nusa, but Karnaseki saved the shot from Berardi. Anyways, in the 68th minute, Mateus Enrique scored the only goal of the game, so Juventus began the season with a shocking loss. Despite the slow start of the season, after 10 games Juventus managed to clinch the first position in the league and Thomas Laval recorded 4 assists and a goal in his first 10 games for the new club. In November, Laval had his first Turin derby against Torino at the Allianz Stadium and Juventus started the game dreadfully, losing 2-0 already in the 22nd minute. Although Sule got one back in the 30th minute, in the beginning of the second half, Torino scored one more time to restore the two-goal lead. In the 63rd minute, Thomas Laval managed to pull one back after Vlahovic's assist, but it was not enough. Torino won in the derby, 3-2. Already in January, Juventus had equal points with Inter and these two teams were in the top of the table. And in individual level, Thomas Laval had already 14 goal contributions in 24 games, very respectable stats for the first season in Turin. One of the most decisive matches of the season took place on February 10th. Juventus hosted Milan at the Allianz Stadium and Vlahovic opened the score already in the 17th minute. But the hero of the night was Marco Carnesecchi, who made two unbelievable saves in the first half to keep the clean sheet. In the 62nd minute, Rovella scored after Laval's assist and Juventus won 2-0 to climb back to the first place in the table. But in the Champions League, they totally failed the group stages, ending up only third and continued their journey in the Europa League. The first game against Marseille in the round of 16 was a win. In the second match, Moise Keane already scored in the fourth minute to send Juventus through to the quarterfinals, where they smashed Spurs in London 5-2. And despite the loss in the second game, the old lady reached the semi-finals. In the Serie A, after a confident win against Lazio, Juventus hosted another Milan team, Inter, and a win against them could have guaranteed the Serie A trophy for Juventus. But that day Inter were the best team on the pitch. Eduardo scored two times for Nerazzurri to keep Inter in the title race till the last fixture of the season. Meanwhile in the Europa League, Juventus won the first game against Nice 2-0 at the home ground and the second match seemed just a formality. But Nice caused so much trouble in the first half. Karnaseke did his best to not concede but eventually Nice scored in the 43rd minute. Luckily in the second half, it was more or less an even match and Juventus managed to keep one goal lead in the tie and proceed to the final. Simultaneously fighting for the Serie A title, last game against Roma will be the decider. Bianconeri need a win against the Wolves to secure the Scudetto. And to be fair, the old lady played that game with a great desire and scored already in the 14th minute astonishing solo goal from Thomas Laval. Juventus did not stop there and soon Laval Vlahovic pair organized two more goals to give Juve a very comfortable lead in the end of the first half. Despite conceding in the 69th minute from Pellegrini, Bianconeri secured the win in this game and long-awaited record-breaking 37th Scudetto in their history. But in the Europa League final, they have the toughest opponent to overcome. Manchester City is the team to beat to win this trophy. As expected, City started the game as a favorite and scored already in the 11th minute, Lamin Yamal on the scoreboard. In the second half, both doubled their lead, leaving Juve with a little to none chance of saving this game. But soon enough, in the 64th minute, Thomas Laval scored for the old lady to give fans a small hope. In the 91st minute, Laval found himself a shooting angle in the opponent's box and he tried, but Ederson made a brilliant save to win the Europa League trophy for Manchester City. A heartbreaking miss from Thomas and Bianconeri lost the opportunity to win the European trophy. Two stars of this team, Dusan Vlahovic and Thomas Laval, had around 40 goal contributions this season. Vlahovic has become the top scorer in the league, meanwhile Laval won the top assister race, the real duo of the dreams.
Newly reborn Juventus, especially an uplifting performance from their best players, forced the board to take serious actions in the summer transfer window. And despite departures happened, Rabio and Chiesa left the club, Juventus did a fantastic job in the transfer market, buying the transfer of Quentin Timber to share the central midfielder spot with Rovella. For the right back position, Juve board included Bunderson in the direct swap deal for Malo Gusto. And finally, Savio had been signed for 17 million euros as a replacement for Federico Chiesa. In addition to these transfers, three more players have been signed for the squad depth mainly to strengthen the defense. This team looks better than ever with the highest ambitions both in the Serie A and in the Champions League. This time Juventus started the season with a home match against Cremonese and Laval opened the score already in the 7th minute. The second goal scored by Vlahovic was enough to cut the first win in the season. In the Champions League Juventus were in the same group with Barca and the clash for the first place between these two clubs was intense. In the first game at the Camp Nou, Juventus opened the score in the 60th minute with the help of Dusan Vlahovic. 15 minutes later, Vitor Roque equalized the score, Barca took the advantage and nearly scored in the 84th minute from the direct free kick. But Bianconeri fought till the end. And one last attack, Laval sent Vlahovic to the rendezvous with the keeper and he scored his second of the night to grab three precious points in this game. The game against Reims at the Allianz Stadium started not very promising for Juve. They conceded already in the 19th minute. But again, the usual suspects organized the equalizer for Juve. Vlahovic to Laval and the ball is in the net. In the 65th minute, Vlahovic scored himself a winning goal of the game. But in the Serie A, things were not looking as bright and the game against Napoli at the Diego Maradona showed that Juve was not yet ready to compete in two fronts with same success and as a result, fifth place in the Serie A after 10 games. The last game in the Champions League group stages against Victoria, Juventus dictated their will, Laval with a goal and an assist to secure the first spot after 6 games. And in January, things are already looking much better in the league. Third, only 3 points behind Milan. And in addition to Vlahovic and Laval, Rovella showing a great form with 15 goal involvements. In the Champions League round of 16, Juventus won their first game against Atletico Madrid at the Vandra Metropolitana. And in the second match, they just need to keep this score to proceed to the quarterfinals. That was a very tall game till the 80th minute, when surprisingly Atletico took the lead, the goal from Joao Felix. But Juve forced the attack to score before the full time. An unforeseen hero, Quentin Timber, scored in the 84th minute from the Vlahovic's assist. So the old lady progressed in the competition. Next two matches against Leipzig in the quarterfinals were the easiest in this campaign for them. But in the semis, Juve matched up against historically the worst possible opponent, Real Madrid. They beat Bianconeri in the first game at the Santiago Bernabeu 2-1. Juventus fans suffered too much from Real Madrid in past. It is the time for the old lady to break the curse and win against the Champions League kings. But again, Real Madrid was dominating the game in the first half, forcing Karnaseki to make the save after save. In the second half, Quentin Timber had an opportunity to score, but Lunin was good and parried the shot at the near post. Juve continued to seek the ways to score this game and in the 85th minute, Thomas Laval produced an amazing pass to Vlahovic and he equalized the aggregate score. The game went to an extra time, Juventus were playing with the unmatched desire. But everything could have ended in the 110th minute if not an amazing save from Karnaseki, probably the best one of the season. And when the game was approaching to its culmination, Quentin Timber found himself in the opponent box with the ball, a cutback, and Savio smashed the ball into the net, and that was it. Juventus finally won against Real Madrid in the Champions League and reached the final. But before that game, they had another important match, this time against Inter Milan. And the win in that game could have got them the second Scudetto in back-to-back -back seasons. That game at the Allianz Stadium was the most probably one of the worst for Bianconeri. They conceded in the 58th minute. And even worse, Inter scored again in the 64th minute, killing every hope for Juve to win that game. Although Vlahovic pulled one back after Laval's assist, but that was not enough. 
No Serie A title for Juve. The only hope to save this season was to win the last game, the most important one. And again, Lahovic and Laval recorded approximately 40 goal contributions each, one of the best duos of the world football. But can they lead the old lady to another Champions League triumph? Here it is. The final game of the season, Thomas Laval returns to his hometown and the Old Trafford stands welcome him back. One civilian at the Theatre of Dreams could become hero if Juve beat Arsenal. But again, the second year in a row, Juventus is not a favorite to win the European trophy. Arsenal is looking much solid and they open the score in the 21st minute. They score second goal as well after 2 minutes, but luckily for Juve, there was an offside. The goal was ruled out. In the 36th minute, the rarest attack from Bianconeri ended up with a goal from Vlahovic. And again, the score was equal. Despite that goal, Arsenal continued to play better, a touch sharper that night. They took the lead once again in the 62nd minute. This could legit have been the end of the story for Juventus. But they simply refused to surrender and managed to find the equalizer in the 84th minute. Savio scored for the old lady. Arsenal jumped forward to score right away. They pressed high to win the ball back as soon as possible. But Karnaseki managed to find Thomas Laval with the long ball. He passed it to Savio. Savio found Quentin Timber with an amazing through ball. One on one against Allison. And as a high profile now. Number 9, Timber put the ball into the net, an unpredicted hero, Dutchman won the Champions League trophy for Juventus. What an unbelievable scene. All of the talent in that team, central midfielder Quentin Timber became the hero of Turin. This was the first Champions League trophy for Thomas Laval as well. But he was silent that night, at his homeland, at the stadium he dreamed to play all his life. And everything has its reason in sport. Days before that game, Laval learned from news that he has been shockingly left out from the England national team squad for the 2030 World Cup. Italian national team manager Roberto De Zerbi hosted Laval to offer a spot in his team. I know the situation you are having with the English Football Association and especially with the head coach. So maybe you can consider joining the Italian national team. That was a shocking offer and at the same time a savior for Laval's international career. He waited too long, so he decided to take the offer and represent the squadra Azzurra, just like his current manager Diago Mota did. But according to FIFA's regulations, player needs to be living at least 5 years in a country he wants to represent, and he should not play a single competitive match for a previous national team. Laval appeared only in a friendly matches for England, and did spent already four years in Italy, so he decided to stay one more season at Juventus to match all the criteria for a nation switch. Without Laval, current European champions England failed the World Cup, losing to Portugal in the quarterfinals. Though it's Italy, Norway unexpectedly knocked them out in the same phase. But there were more surprises to come, this time on the club level. All of a sudden, Juventus board decided to cash out on their success and saw the core of the players who made it possible. Dusan Vlahovic joined Liverpool for almost 80 million euros. Team's captain Bremer left for Milan, Sule signed for Bayern for 60 million euros and Manuel Locatelli left the club as a free agent. To fill these gaps, Juventus signed two very experienced players in Mazraoui as a backup for Malo Gusto and Subimendi as a direct replacement for Locatelli. Wilfried Nonto joined the squad as a backup in flanks, but the main signing of the window was an Italian rising star Antonio Martinelli. Only 18 years old striker, he will most probably be the second choice after Moise Keane. As a result of this transformation, Thomas Laval has become the captain of Bianconeri. The season started with a game against Real Sociedad for the UEFA Super Cup. Juventus dominated that game as anticipated. Thomas Laval got himself a brace, scoring the second goal from Martinelli's assist. That was enough to win another trophy with Juventus, this time as a captain of the team. In the Champions League, Juventus and Barca were drawn in the same group again. 
The first game at the Allianz Stadium started with the Barcelona's advantage until the 25th minute when Gavi picked up a straight red for not a very harsh tackle to be honest. Anyways, with a man advantage, the old lady managed to score just once. In the 65th minute, after a breakthrough run, Moiskin set the final score. First game and first win for Juve in the Champions League. The second win came shortly after that. They beat Belgian Ghent. In the Serie A, Juve took a solid start as well, becoming first in the table after 10 games. Thomas Laval was the genuine leader of the team with almost one goal contributions per match. But soon their form started to decline and against Milan at the San Siro they suffered a loss with a minimal score of 1-0, which could have a big impact on the title race. In the Champions League as well, Bianconeri faced big problems in the match against Ajax at the Johan Cruyff Arena. A disallowed goal and a lot of bottled chances in the first half due to a poor finishing. The second half was much worse and the only shot from Juventus was in the last minute of the game. As a result, only a single point for Juventus in Amsterdam. Although Bianconeri took an expected win in the match against Ghent at the Allianz Stadium, only a single goal was scored. With 3 wins and 3 draws, Juve ended up the group stages in the first position, but unfortunately matched up against Liverpool in the round of 16. Meanwhile in the league, 4 teams were in the title race in January after 18 games. Thomas Laval slowed down his productivity up front and that became one of the main reasons for Juve's modest results. In the Champions League, there were a huge tension in the second game against Liverpool, as Vlahovic made his return to the Alien Stadium, but this time as the opponent's player. First game finished 3-3. Vlahovic could have scored already in the 11th minute, but Karnas Eki made a huge save. Liverpool's Trafford also were fantastic that night and made a couple of great saves himself. Match ended without scored goals and went to an extra time. Juventus created their best chance in the 95th minute when Martinelli found himself in the killer position but Trafford denied him with a brilliant save. Just seconds before the final whistle of a match, Carvalho won the ball from the defender, squared it to Vlahovic who put the ball into the net and became a villain for Juve's fan in an instant by celebrating his goal as a madman. Current Champions League winners left the tournament in the round of 16. That was clearly a shock for the fans. And the situation in the league was not better. 8 points behind Milan after 29 games. It seemed that even a miracle would not save the season for Juve. But everything changed in the match against Lazio at the Allianz Stadium. Visitors scored already in the 19th minute, a stunning finish from Cancellieri. And the loss in that game would most probably mean the end of the title race for Juventus. In the beginning of the second half, Juve managed to equalize the score. Antonio Martinelli grabbed the goal from Savio's assist. The old lady were attacking constantly and Thomas Laval almost scored a screamer in the 56th minute. But the hero of that night was Savio, who ended up scoring the winner in the 86th minute to keep Juventus' chances alive in the title race. Four consecutive wins for the old lady and a gap between them and Milan reduced to six points. Juventus got another tough match at the Diego Maradona Stadium, where they outplayed Napoli completely. Quentin Timber scored already in the 12th minute, Antonio Martinelli doubled their lead in the 19th minute, clinching three valuable points for Bianconeri. Before the last fixture, Juventus somehow managed to reduce the margin with Milan down to three points and keep tight any chances for the trophy. But before the last match of the season, they had the cup final to play against Monza, where Juventus was a clear favorite to win. And they did prove it on the pitch. If not the brilliant play from Milan Melier, Monza could have conceded a bunch of goals in that game. In the 25th minute, Thomas Laval finally opened the score after Martinelli's assist to give Juve a lead. In the second half, Milan Melier continued his unbelievable performance between the sticks for Monza, saving each and every attempt from Bianconeri. But sadly for him, that was not enough. Juventus were crowned as the Coppa d'Italia winners and Laval raised yet another trophy as the team's captain.
Arguably the most important match of the season took place couple of days after that final, where Juventus hosted AS Roma and scored in the 35th minute with Martinelli. Near the end of the match Juventus got a free kick 21 meters from the goal but Laval missed the target. Anyways, 5 minutes later, he scored the winning goal after Martinelli's assist. And if Milan lost the game, Juventus had a chance of winning the Scudetto in a playoff tiebreaker. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Milan won the league with 82 points, despite that fact Juventus has had one of the most impressive seasons with 4 trophies. Anyways, the main two competitions they eventually failed to win. Laval finished the season with 40 goal contributions. The breakthrough player of the season was Antonio Martinelli, who overtook starting spot from Moiskin and outscored him as well. There was a clear tension between Laval and the board, especially after the transfer policy they adopted. And as he became eligible for a call out to the Italian national team, Thomas Laval decided to leave Turin permanently. Juve's board were happy with that decision, as they could cash out on him big time. Soon Vincent Company approached Thomas Laval and offered him a contract for Bayern Munich, with guaranteed playtime alongside the best player in his position, Jamal Musiala. The offer were tempting and Thomas Laval decided to take it immediately. His transfer became the biggest in the Bayern Munich history. 150 million euros paid for Laval's arrival and to accumulate that much cash Bayern had to sell some players. Anyways, a whole new journey for Laval begins in Munich with the game against Eintracht Frankfurt at the Allianz Arena. Surprisingly Frankfurt took the lead early in the game just after that Bayern started to force the goal but missed a bunch of great chances in the first half. Although Jamal Musiala got the equalizer for Bayern in the 58th minute, Eintracht scored their second of the game right after that and managed to keep the score till the end of the match. Thomas Laval started with a loss at Bayern Munich. But soon, he made another long-awaited debut in his career. September 4th, 2031, Thomas Laval is in the starting 11 for Italy in the Euros 2032 qualifiers match against Ukraine. And he looks as motivated as possible. He even scored in the beginning of the match, but the goal was ruled out because of an offside. He was taking the free kicks of the team, acting as a true leader. And his debut was victorious, as the only goal scored by Fabio Mire was enough for Italy to qualify for the upcoming Euros. In the league things started to normalize for Bayern soon and they got an easy win in the Der Klassiker against Borussia Dortmund at the Elias Stadium. Goals from Matti Stell and Jamal Musiala secured all three points for Bayern. In the Champions League match against Rangers, Thomas Laval scored a beautiful finesse in the beginning of the first half to help his team to start the tournament with the win. Laval started to take the role of the leader of the team as well. And in the match against Leipzig, he provided an early assist to Matti Stell. He was taking all the free kicks in the team and even trying a solo runs, long range shots. He strived to show all his skills and flair and soon he got a brilliant opportunity to do so in the match against his former club Atalanta in the Champions League. Surprisingly, Atalanta was the team who scored first, Iran Kunda on the scoreboard. Bayern Munich managed to pull one back in the beginning of the second half. Matti Stell equalized the score from Laval's assist. But Atalanta was just better that night. They scored three goals in the spare of 15 minutes to kill the game off. Musiala got one back near the end of the match and that was it. An embarrassing loss for Bayern in Bergamo. After 17 games, Bayern was first in the league and Thomas Laval did not need any time for his adaptation to the new reality. 25 goal contributions in 25 games. In the Champions League round of 16, Bayern was matched up against Lazio and the first match in Rome ended up 1-1, so both teams needed a win to progress in the competition. Lazio were very close to score in the first half, but Cancellieri hit the crossbar. Bayern started the second half aggressively and scored 5 minutes after receiving the match and that goal was enough to beat Lazio. The next opponent was levels above, Barcelona was waiting for Bayern. But historically Barca is not a scary 
opponent for Munich and they reached semi-finals quite comfortably. This time they faced another Spanish grunt, Real Madrid and won the first game at the Allianz Arena 2-1. They went to Madrid with a goal advantage. And to be fair, Bayern were much better that night. Thomas Laval was shining on the pitch, he provided two assists in that game. And with an aggregate score of 4-1, Bayern beat Real Madrid to reach the Champions League final. But just before that game, they need a single point in the match against Borussia Dortmund at the Signal Iduna Park to secure the Bundesliga title. But a loss will guarantee the trophy for Borussia. The winner of the title race will be decided in the last match between the two best teams of the country. A unique opportunity to make the history. Bayern started a match a bit better and had a massive chance to score already in the 8th minute. But Musiala got denied by a post. 8 minutes later Borussia created a chance themselves and Duranville took it brilliantly giving the Bees an advantage in the title race. Laval continued to take the responsibility but again he was bang average from the standards. But in open play he was unmatched. Another unbelievable through ball to Matisse Tell, one on one with the keeper and an ordinary but invaluable finish from Tell that secured another Bundesliga trophy for Bayern. To win it in front of your rival fans it should taste twice as sweet. Joshua Kimmich is raising the championship shield for Bayern. First trophy for Laval in Germany. But he has an opportunity to win the second one right away. For his second Champions League trophy, he is going to compete with Mbappe and PSG. An incredible season with 46 goal contributions. The top assist provider award in the Bundesliga can be crowned with the Champions League trophy for Laval, automatically making him one of the favorites of the Ballon d'Or 2032. But at first, he needs to win it. Bayern Munich had such an incredible first half that night in Gelsenkirchen. Laval could have scored himself from the tight angle. In the 13th minute, Molero missed an amazing chance to open the score for Bayern. 15 minutes later, Matisse Tell got denied by Donnarumma from a close distance, a shambolic miss from the Frenchman. In the second half, everything turned upside down. And Mbappe showed Laval how to execute free kicks. A brilliant goal to give a lead to PSG. 10 minutes later Mbappe doubled their lead to kill all the hopes of Laval to claim the second Champions League trophy that night. Soon, couple of minutes later Laval had a massive chance to pull one back but Donnarumma made yet another save to keep PSG's two goals lead. But the hope was still alive and in the 81st minute Laval found Tell in the opponent's box and Bayern got their first of the night. But sadly it was too little too late. PSG beat Bayern in the Champions League final and Mbappe outran Laval in the race for the Ballon d'Or. The only thing left for him is to join the Italian national team for the upcoming Euros. Italy is run with Denmark, Romania and Netherlands in the same group. The Derby is using this weird formation to fill in all the best player he has in the team. But the tournament itself started very poorly for Italy. Danish star Rasmus Hoylund completed the brace already in the 41st minute. Right before the end of the first half, Thomas Laval managed to get one back with a beautiful half volley. Another goal scored by Antonio Martinelli in the 58th minute saved a point for Italy. But that was not good enough and they needed a win in the second game against Romania to approach the last game with the best possible chances to qualify. Just like the first game, Italy started that game extremely bad and lost the first half 2-0. Laval scored for Italy their first of the night and the second goal by Wilfred Enondo brought another point to Italy, leaving them a small chance to qualify after all. But for that, they had to win the last game of the group stages against Netherlands. After the goalless first half, Netherlands opened the score in the 52nd minute with Xavi Simons. Italy managed to equalize the score only 30 minutes after they conceded and remaining time was not enough to score the winning goal. And just like that, Italy were eliminated from the Euros. That was a real fiasco for Squadra Azzurra. Meanwhile in the club level, Diego Simeone has been assigned as the new manager of Manchester United. And he wanted to rebuild the team around their academy talent who became one of the world's best players. And he approached Thomas Laval with an offer to join his boyhood club. 
you should return to the old Trafford. You have to prove the fans that they were wrong. You've got everything the top player needs and beyond. With us, you will become the best in the world and together we can make this club the number one in the Europe once again. But the frustration Thomas had regarding the Red Devils fans was still there. He was not ready to return back, although that was his dream from the first day he left. In Munich things were much stable. The Champions League finalists were pushing hard in the transfer market with new signings and players like Aaron Hickey and Adam Wharton joined the team to help with the unfinished task of winning the treble. The season started for them with a game against Borussia Dortmund for the German Super Cup at the Olympia Stadium, where Dortmund players had a plan of stopping Laval with dirty tackles and harsh challenges. And that plan was totally collapsed when Thomas Laval scored the winning goal just couple of minutes before the final whistle and brought yet another trophy to his team. Right after that game he failed a discomfort and soon after that he picked up an ACL injury which left him out of the field for 9 months. That was a huge blow for Bayern Munich as all their plans of winning the treble were crushed. They are only 5th in the table after 15 games and 15 points behind Dortmund. That much gap will be extremely hard to reduce. In the second half of the season, despite all the problems and injuries they had, Bayern managed to win against Dortmund at the Signal Iduna Park keeping their hopes for the title alive. In the contrary, if Bayern make to the UCL final, Thomas Laval will most probably be available for that game. And they did pass Real Madrid with the aggregate score of 3-2 in the quarterfinals, scoring the winning goal at the Santiago Bernabeu in the last minute of the game. In the semi-finals they matched up against Manchester City, and despite a draw at the 88 stadium, citizens managed to eliminate Bayern from the competition, winning 5-3 on aggregate at the Allianz Arena. Without Thomas Laval, Bayern had a stinker of a season, ended up winning only one trophy, finishing fourth in the Bundesliga and out from the semis in the Champions League. Bang average stats from pretty much all leaders of the team was a clear indicator that this team was heavily reliant on just one man. Meanwhile at the Old Trafford, things were going not as planned. Despite a fantastic job in the transfer market, signing of such an amazing players like Thomas Laval's partner up front in the Italian national team Antonio Martinelli, one of the best left backs in the world, Nuno Mench, and even Michael Olise, Manchester United ended up the season only fifth in the Premier League and without the trophy in other competitions as well. The missing part of that project was Thomas Laval and Diego Simeone tried one more time to sign him. I know you had a bad season and you want to prove everybody that you can come back even stronger and this is your chance to do so. We can win every trophy with you as a leader in this team. Although Laval had an offer from the current Champions League winners, Manchester City on the table as well, he did not want to betray his boyhood club and he made his decision. After 7 years from his debut, Thomas Laval is returning to the Old Trafford but as a main star for the Red Devils. In the starting day of the season, he scored only 3 minutes into the game. This time, he was as motivated as possible to succeed at Manchester. They looked solid in the beginning of the season, winning match after match until they met their City rivals. That was a clear test for United, as City were flying that night, scoring 3 goals past Restes. They took all 3 points from the Old Trafford. Manchester United continued to lose precious points against their direct competitors in the league. This time losing to Liverpool at the Anfield. As a result, they were only third in the league after 20 games. But in individual level, Thomas Laval was brilliant with 25 goal contributions in 27 games. In the Europa League, Manchester United reached the semis, where they face RC Lens. Although United lost the first game with minimal score, they started the second match scoring quite early. In the 8th minute, Martinelli grabbed the goal after Laval's assist. 15 minutes later, Lens managed to restore their aggregate lead though. Manchester United scored one more time in the second half from the corner with Matis De Ligt and second assist for Laval as well. The game went to an extra time and although United tried their best to win it without a penalty shootout, that did not happen. Penalties it was. An RC Lens missed twice, giving United a chance to win it all with the fifth shot. Thomas Laval stepped in to take it and he missed one more time the decisive penalty in front of its own fans. That could have been a disaster. 
if not only Guillaume Restes and his brilliant saves to secure a spot for Manchester United in the Europa League final. The Red Devils ended up the season in the Premier League 4, securing the Champions League football for the next season, regardless of result of the Europa League final. Simultaneously winning the Carabao Cup, Thomas Laval had his best season yet with 51 goal contributions and that season can be crowned with European trophy if Manchester United managed to win against Feyenoord. The Red Devils were heavy favourites in that final and Thomas Laval opened the score already in the 11th minute. But Feyenoord was not ready to give up yet and they equalised the score in the second half. In the 71st minute United got a free kick in the killer position. Can Laval finally convert a direct free kick when it matters the most? A shot! A lucky deflection and the ball went in. Thomas Laval completed a brace to finally win another European trophy for the Red Devils. And with this game, he definitely rescued his reputation at the Old Trafford. And starting from that moment, he was going to be the fans' favorite. It is the summer of 2034, a World Cup year, and Laval joined the Italian national team to participate in the World Cup first time in his career. Italy are in the Group C with Norway, Ghana and Poland. Not an easy group by any means. Squadra Azzurra switched the formation to more ordinary but yet effective 4-3-1-2. The main change in starting 11 compared to the Euros are addition of Giordano in the right back position. And of course the goalkeeper switch. Marco Carneseki will be the number one for Squadra Azzurra instead of Gigi Donnarumma. But again, nothing has changed in terms of poor performances from the Italian national team in the beginning of the tournament. Erling Haaland opened the score for Norway in the 32nd minute of the opening match. He was very close to double their lead just before the half time but the ball refused to bounce in after hitting the crossbar. In the 65th minute Laval has found himself one on one with the keeper after Martinelli's through ball and he equalized the score. Slowly but surely, the game was approaching to its end when in the stoppage time, Haaland took an advantage of a lack of concentration among Italian defenders and scrapped all three points for Norway, leaving Squadra Azzurra with the worst possible start of the World Cup. That meant only one thing, win was a must for them in the second game against Ghana. Luckily, Italy put their best effort to do so when the stakes were as high as possible. Two superstars of Squadra Azzurra made the difference, Martinelli and Laval were the core scorers in this match. The last game of the group stages against Poland was decisive. Both teams had a chance to qualify from the first place, but for Italy, a loss would most probably mean the end of a campaign. So they did not waste a single chance, and Thomas Laval scored the goal of the tournament pretender. Already in the third minute, putting the ball into the net with a long range finesse, an incredible finish from him. But Poland were not looking bad at all and they managed to equalize in the 23rd minute. That score was enough for them to win the tournament ahead of Italy. So Squadra Azzurra continued forcing the goal and grabbed the winner in the 37th minute. Antonio Martinelli managed to give the lead to his team which secured the knockout football for Italy eventually. But the draw was tough. A classical European clash with France took place in the round of 16. Everybody anticipated a world-class football that night, but in fact, that was a night of shocking misses from both sides. Especially the miss from Laval were embarrassing. Anyways, Italy were a little bit closer to win that night. And again, Antonio Martinelli stepped up one more time in the 68th minute to make their way through to the quarterfinals. With this kind of performances, Martinelli overshadowed Laval and his chances for the Ballon d'Or. If Thomas wants to keep his chances alive for the most prestigious individual trophy, he needs to take more responsibility and perform much better than this. Soon he had a chance to do exactly that in the game against Jerry Germany in the quarterfinals. Another tough opponent for Squadra Azzurra, but they started the game aggressively and already opened the score in the 13th minute from the corner kick. Scalvini managed to give a lead to Italy from Laval's assist. But in the second half, Germany did put a massive pressure on the Italian defense and that night Marco Carnesecchi proved to be the best choice between the sticks with his multiple saves. 
But even that was not enough to keep the tiny lead Squadra Azzurra had. As Laval's partner from the Bayern dance, Jamal Musiala managed to equalize the score 5 minutes before the final whistle. Match went to an extra time, where Italy got a corner kick again in the 99th minute. And another beautiful delivery from Thomas Laval, this time Udoji scored a banking header to give a lead to Squadra Azzurra one more time. They could even extend it, but Pafundi hit right to the goalie after Laval's no-look pass. Germany did not give up until the dying seconds of the game and could have been rewarded for that, if not only an astonishing save from Karnaseki. How did he even touch the ball there? An unbelievable save, which put Italy through to the semis, where they were going to face Poland from all the teams, and undeniably they underestimated a beautiful team from Poland. If not for a brilliant play of the new hero of Italy, Marco Karnesecki, who made a huge amount of saves that night, Poland would have won that game quite comfortably in normal time. But again, the match went to an extra time. Italy started to show signs of an attack in football, and mainly due to Thomas Laval, they ended Poland's dominance in this match and scored twice in the first extra time. Scalvini from a corner kick, and then Wilfried Nonto secured Italy a chance to fight for the World Cup trophy in the final against Portugal. Portugal had one of the best teams in the tournament, but on the contrary, Italy had Thomas Laval, the main contender who became the player of the tournament with 3 goals and 4 assists. But he needed to do an impossible in the final, to finally won his first proper international trophy and the best one possible at the same time. But Portugal players were not easy on him, putting on him dirty challenges constantly. Soon Italy had a massive chance to open the score, but Rovella didn't manage to chip Costa properly. Right after that, Italy got their opportunity. Thomas Laval got the ball in the middle of the Portuguese defensive lines. Couple of skills and body feints. And an inch perfect finish just outside of the box. What a beautiful solo goal from Laval. That was just too close to what Messi used to do. Such an incredible goal from Laval. In the beginning of the second half, Portugal got a free kick in a dangerous position. They decided to play short and Borges dribbled past Bastoni and put the ball into the net, equalizing the score. But Laval was dead a mind that night to win the trophy with all cost. Soon he found Nonto in the middle of the box with a loped pass. Nonto hit the post, but Giordano was the first on the ball. He put it in. But unfortunately, he was offside, so the goal was ruled out. Everybody were consent with a draw in normal time, except Thomas Laval, who got the ball in a shooting position from Martinelli in the 88th minute and put the ball into the net past Costa with a brilliant shot. Winning for Italy their 5th World Cup in history. Just like that, the decision of Roberto De Zerbi to bring on Thomas Laval from England was destined to be the best in his entire career. With 9 goals contributions in 7 games, Thomas Laval became the player of the tournament and the main favorite to win the Ballon d'Or race as a result of the season of the lifetime he just had. Meanwhile, Manchester United were busy in the transfer market as two big departures happened right after the World Cup. Firstly, Alejandro Garnacho left the team to join Newcastle. But the toughest pill to swallow was the departure of the team's star boy Kobe Mainu, who signed three years deal with Real Madrid. Instead of these players, United signed a talented young Englishman Leon Palmer for 50 million from Aston Villa. Another Englishman, a backup goalkeeper from Southampton, Marcus Edwards, and two other players as a direct replacement for Mainu and Garnacho, in Archie Gray from Marseille, and the young, talented Brazilian winger from Saudi League, Agenor Correa. Team was looking a little bit new, with more young players in the squad compared to the previous season. And that team started the season instantly winning a trophy. An only goal of the game for the Community Shield against Burnley was scored in the end of the first half, Antonio Martinelli on the scoreboard. Everybody were waiting for November the 2nd, when France football were going to announce the Ballon d'Or winner. Of course, Laval was nominated. He got 62 goal contributions in a single season and was the best player at the World Cup. He definitely deserved that award. He made the best four for the first time and right away won the ultimate award. Congratulations to Thomas Laval for his first ever Ballon d'Or.
In the Premier League itself, Manchester United were much more stable compared to the previous season. And Antonio Martinelli were crucial for the team in the games against their rivals and direct competitors in the league, bringing all six points against Liverpool and Manchester City in the first half of the season. And as a result, the Red Devils were first in the table with equal points with Chelsea after 15 games. Thomas Laval continued his phenomenal form of the last season as well, 21 and 6 in just 20 games. In the Champions League round of 16, Manchester United were drawn against Atletico Madrid. The first game at the Old Trafford ended up 1-1 and the only goal scored by Antonio Martinelli in a 55th minute at the Wanda Metropolitana was enough for the Red Devils to qualify for the quarterfinals. Where Arsenal sadly smashed United 3-1 at the Old Trafford, leaving them with very few chances to sneak through to the semis. Anyways, Thomas Laval was again playing like in a mission. He opened the score in the beginning of the second half. One more goal and the game would go to an extra time. In the 60th minute, Laval missed the target by inches from the long range. But he simply did not stop there. The last minute of the game, another smart move from him. An incisive pass to Antonio Martinelli, but he shot right down the middle to the keeper's hands. That was the last opportunity of the game. Arsenal beat Manchester United to eliminate them from the Champions League quarterfinals. And in the league as well, Arsenal are first of the 33 games with 8 points lead over Manchester United. But the Red Devils have a game in hand. Basically, they need to win all the 6 remaining games and hope that Arsenal would lose the points. That seemed like mission impossible. An old decisive match happened at the Old Trafford where United host their city rivals. The loss in that game would clearly put an end to the title race. Antonio Martinelli did find his form from the beginning of the season and was the X factor of the team. And the direct red card of Foden made the Red Devils task much easier. 2-0 victory in the end and that was a start of the winning streak that last lasted until the last fixture of the season. The win against Leicester City at the home ground will guarantee the Premier League trophy for Manchester United. That was going to happen eventually. Thomas Laval won the Premier League trophy for Manchester United, scoring the only goal of the game in the 71st minute. It took him 10 years from his debut, until the very moment he was crowned as the Premier League winner with his boyhood club. Although they did not manage to win a treble or even a UCL this season, but finally, once a football giant rose from the ashes and conquered the Albion one more time with the help of its academy talent, the unbelievable Thomas Laval. The only dream he had from a young age was to win the Champions League with Manchester United. The 2035-36 season seemed to be the one. In the group stages, Manchester United set a new benchmark, fiercely competing in every match. Thomas Laval even played against his former club Juventus and nothing could stop the Red Devils led by their true on-field leader. This campaign was transformative for Laval, who emerged as the primary playmaker and assist provider in Europe. He was more focused on team success rather than scoring goals and contributing towards yet another Ballon d'Or. His focus shifted from personal awards to the team's success, clearly understanding that the ultimate goal was to achieve European glory. Following a perfect run in the group stages, United were drawn against Atletico de Madrid in the round of 16. And the first leg itself answered all the questions about the potential winner. French newcomer Gomez opened the scoring for Manchester United, and two more goals from Agenor Correa and Michael Olise in the second half sealed the dominant 3 0 victory. The second game was only a formality, and a 4 1 aggregate score demonstrated United's strong position as a clear favourite. In the quarterfinal, the first leg at the Old Trafford ended in a draw, but the second leg at the Camp Nou saw Thomas Laval deliver a masterful performance with a goal and an assist, leading his team to the semi-finals. There, another of Laval's former clubs, Bayern Munich, awaited. The first half of this two-leg match at the Allianz Stadium was all Manchester United, and a brace of assists from Thomas Laval set the tone in this tie. Laval managed to get yet another assist in a second match as well, and with aggregate score of 3-1, 
Manchester United made their way to the Champions League final. Despite already securing two trophies that season, the Champions League was the ultimate prize United were hunting for so long. Laval excelled throughout the tournament, recording 12 assists and showcasing an extraordinary form that promised to end a long period of disappointment for the fans. In the final, Laval was on fire, scoring an early goal in the ninth minute and then creating another chance for Gomez, which he somehow managed to convert. This lead was more than sufficient to secure the trophy that had passed the Red Devils up for over 25 years. United's fate in their academy talent had paid off spectacularly, with Laval emerging as the best player in the world, leading the best team in Europe.